Tonight, I'm going to be talking about navigating the holidays and all the things that come with it. You know, it's not just this perfectly magical time of year for all of us as much as we would like it to be. Oftentimes, there comes stress, loneliness, and also managing difficult relationships because when it's this time of year, we we don't always have the choice around who we're going to be spending time with. You know, it's we we enjoy being with family, but sometimes um, family can bring up old trauma or even just difficult, unsettling feelings that are really challenging for some of us. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on setting our intentions for the holidays. This time of year, although magical, can also be an extremely difficult time for many. For various reasons, it can trigger unresolved childhood trauma, loneliness, and of course, financial stress and overwhelm. So my intention for tonight's call is to hold space for the loneliness, the trauma, and the stress as we gently guide our focus towards healing, growth, and freedom from the past. So about a month ago, I broke out in this horrible rash. I was so discouraged because I'd I'd like to believe that I'm pretty healthy and that I do what it takes to maintain optimal health. And, you know, many of us have seen tremendous results with our health and well-being thanks to the ER Shred protocol, but our diets can only take us so far. It can't cure our emotional wounds, unfortunately. (laughs) It can be a stepping stone and create a huge breakthrough, but it's only a third of the equation when we're talking about holistic health. So as much as I teach that health is not just about what we eat, it's also about how well we're able to manage our minds and our emotions. This piece to the puzzle just seemed to slip past my awareness when I broke out in this rash. My first response was to blame my diet, thinking, what am I doing wrong? What supplements do I need? What should I start eating or stop eating? You know, I skipped right past the obvious and my focus went directly to my diet instead of looking at my stress levels and emotional health. We really need to always be aware of the whole body, mind, and soul. Sometimes we need a little nudge from people who know us best, though. (laughs) Thank you, Sean, for encouraging me to look deeper. So let's take a look at the emotional scale. I've talked about this before. I'm sure many of you, you're all familiar with it. There's a whole range of emotions that we experience, but we can essentially divide it into two categories. There's the elevated emotions, the ones that we love and allow us to feel free and at peace. But then there are the heavy ones that we call survival emotions. It's the primitive side of us that keeps us in fear, constantly scanning our environment for potential threats. They've served our ancestors well, kept our species alive. But the problem is that now we no longer face the same threats as our ancestors, but our brain is still trying to catch up. And that's where our work comes in with our you know, increasing self-awareness, we really have the ability to contribute to the evolution of mankind by actively calming that fight or flight response. Every time we have a stressful thought or a painful memory comes up, our body creates cortisol. And we all know how that stress hormone can wreak havoc on our physical and mental health. We feel powerless to our environment sometimes, and we don't know exactly how to calm the fight or flight response that's happening. That's where we often get stuck, right? These emotions can get trapped in our bodies. And if not properly processed, then eventually they manifest themselves in the form of illness or physical symptoms like a rash. I really believe that diet can absolutely be the solution to a lot of our illnesses and symptoms, but I also think that we need to look at our emotions just as much as we look at our diet. What emotion could be underneath the symptoms you're currently experiencing? Let's take a moment now to feel into our bodies. Take a deep breath, really set your intentions for this, for tonight and for the holidays. And let's get 
to the root of whatever emotion that you're feeling. Sometimes it starts with the symptoms. And if you don't have any physical symptoms right now, let's go straight to the emotion. What heavy emotion do you feel consistently around this time of year? About five years ago, I realized something. I used to wake up in the morning feeling great, but it only lasted a couple minutes. And once my brain came online, I was flooded with anxiety. My brain was in the habit of reminding me of all the things that I should be worried about or the things that I should be bothered about. It was like my brain just kept feeding it to me every single morning. And I couldn't understand why, like, I would have this moment of feeling good and then all the thoughts came in and I didn't know how to manage that at the time. So once um, my brain, you know, I, I, this is kind of what has taken me down the path of personal development and led me to eventually becoming a mindset coach because I was so desperate to find out if it was possible to not have those feelings of anxiety first thing in the morning (laughs) is like, I realized like, wait, maybe that's not normal for everybody. And maybe there's a way to soothe that anxiety and to feel better more of the time. So now we are aware of the emotion. Now let's find out what's underneath that. What event is attached to this emotion? The events in our lives are what forms our beliefs about ourselves, about other people, and about life in general, about the holidays, about families, about how we should be, about what we should be doing around this time of year. How many of you feel a lot of pressure to do what is you know, probably known as just tradition, you know, like sending out Christmas cards, sending out neighbor gifts, doing all this list long of things that we feel almost an obligation to do because it's what has been done for years. It's what is a tradition. It's been done for generations. And now we feel this obligation to continue doing it. Even if they're deep down inside, you might have some resistance to it and wonder like, do I really have to do that? Why do I feel like I need to do that? And even the the stress and obligation and overwhelm that we feel as parents to our own children. All right. So now we really can, we get the opportunity to investigate this emotion and these past experiences that we've had, that we have had that may be stirring up some unsettling emotions now. And it only tends to come up this time of year. So we bring it up for the purpose of healing, releasing, and letting go. That way we can identify the story and the meaning that we've put be, put into these stories. Then we get to work on rewriting the story and little by little we can change that narrative. So there's really no quick fix to you know managing these unsettling emotions that we tend to feel this time of year, but it's an opportunity for us to practice. Um, it takes time and repetition to create new, new neural pathways in the brain and to rewrite the narrative and to actually believe it. You know, that's an important part. You know, you can tell a story about your past and then you can m- attempt to change that narrative in, in a more positive way, but it's not going to help you if it's not something that you can believe. So you c- you really have to climb the ladder of, these different emotions and take it one baby step at a time. We're not going to like heal ourselves overnight and heal our past traumas overnight and overcome all this stress and loneliness overnight. But every time, every time these emotions come up, it is an opportunity for us to dig a little deeper. So when we think about going into the holidays and what we typically feel this time of year, It really is the perfect opportunity to heal some of those past experiences. Um, As these things are brought to the surface, we get to look at them with a goal in mind to get to the bottom of it, right? So think of it, I like to think of it as like a college course you're about to take. What is the objective? What would the bullet points be? If it were a book, what would it be called? 
what are some of the chapters you think would be covered in this book? This way, when I look at it this way, I can really be, it's a more empowering approach to these negative feelings and emotions that come up because then I feel like there's a lot to learn. And that can be really exciting when we realize the opportunity to learn and to discover more about ourselves and really get down into that those programs, those subconscious programs that we developed as as children. And and as we see as we look closer at them, we can see how they are affecting us in a negative way. And then we can do our part by trying to rewrite that. So tonight we're going to have the opportunity to do that live. There's been, there's a few people that volunteered to be coached. So I'm excited to dive into that, but you know, I wanted to go talk a little bit again about my, the rash that I had, because, um, you know, once I got past my initial frustration around it, I decided to take that more empowered approach. And I began asking questions like, what is this rash teaching me? And that's, I feel like a rash is similar to anybody else's experience around this time of year. It's similar to, um, you know, you can just put it side by side with anything that you're feeling and ask that same question. You're like, what is this teaching? What is this trying to reveal to me? What is this teaching me? How can we go into this with the objective is to really dig deeper and find out what is to be learned and what are the lessons that I can really take away from all of this. So we're going to start with Jackie. All right. Thank you, Jack Jackie, for being willing to do this. I think this can be really helpful as we um, get a little more personal and, you know, you share your experience. I'm sure a lot of people can relate in different ways. And so it can be very useful for everybody listening in. Yeah. Um, I hope I can get through it, but I'll, because <laughs> when you said feel into the feeling before, mine's grief. And so, uh, I mean, I, Ultimately, I had a, a really challenging childhood and I experienced a lot of things that a child shouldn't experience. And, um, you know, I'm 53 now, but this was, you know, like even unbeknownst to my own mom, like as a young girl, I became a master of disguise and I, I was a really good little actress, you know, happy on the outside, but not happy on the inside. And I lived like that for decades. And so I even, like I grew up in New Zealand, I live in Australia now, but I, you know, when I was 18, I bolted, like I bolted to the other side of the world as far away as I could, because there were just memories and people and things that I just couldn't live around anymore. So, and of course I was still, I was 18, I wanted to go on an adventure, but you know, I ultimately I've lived outside of my homeland since then. You know, I've gone back a lot to visit and everything, but so I've kind of, you know, put my decision, but, um, you know, it was a pretty, it's well, no, maybe not such a unique situation, unfortunately, but, you know, it was just easier for me that way. And, but the most heartbreaking part was being away from my mum. And uh, she, she was a center of my world. And right up until last year when she died, um, really suddenly and unexpectedly, um, she was everything you know we talked even though there was countries and oceans between us she was every day she was my sounding board she was my advisor she was my number one we 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 really um, were very exceptionally close and she I explained to I told her all about my childhood when I was a, a grown woman but for me Christmas is the melting pot of a lot of emotions obviously I'm still very um I'm still very, very much grieving my mum, but um, it's also a grief of a loss of childhood, a loss of a functional family. My family was really dysfunctional, but a lot of people on the outside didn't know how dysfunctional it was. Um, you know, I had a father who had a lot of problems. He took his own life. Um, but, you know, I, Crystal, I've done so much work over the years to stop living like a victim and to 
really embrace my power and to be grateful for all of the shit that I went through because it's made me who I am today and it's made me more of a warrior, a woman who can stand up. And I spoke to Sean about this yesterday, about shining a light on those places that we need to shine a light in. But when it comes to Christmas, I just, the wheels just fall off. Like I just feel sad. And I've got a beautiful husband. I've got a gorgeous son. Um, I've got a really nice life. I've got a really, really nice life. I've got some friends of mine on this Zoom now. Um, I've got beautiful people around me, but it's sad that I don't, I feel a bit like an orphan in a way, you know? So Christmas is, it's just a sad time of year in, in, in some ways. And I feel really bad because it should be, it's supposed to be the magical happiest time of the year. And I'm like, Ugh. you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm grateful every day for what I have. Mm -hmm. But when Christmas comes around, I just kind of fall apart. Yeah, I can definitely understand why you would feel that way. It's all still so fresh for you with your mother dying only a year ago. Yeah. And so I think, yes, grief is for sure the emotion that you're experiencing. And I think what happens oftentimes, you know, especially since you have done so much work, you've spent so much time, you know, trying to see it from the perspective of not a victim and how this has helped you grow as a person. But at the same time, you're almost shaming yourself for still feeling what you're feeling. Like I should be, you know, I should be happier this time of year. I have got, I've got so much to be grateful for. And I see this happen a lot. And it's actually something that I realized I was doing myself as well mm -hmm. thinking because this is something that I do you know um as a profession and realizing how much shame I pile on myself for not doing everything perfectly and not feeling um you know feeling negative when I know that I I don't need to be feeling negative it's like yeah. I I'm not allowing myself to feel what I'm feeling mm -hmm even though I know it's important, I know it's important to feel your emotions, but to actually integrate that and to put it into practice is a whole nother story. You know, it's hard mm. to know, well, how long can I feel this? And when should I be done feeling this? We have yeah. this like timeline that we're like, okay, I should probably be beyond this by now. Mm. And then we shame ourselves and then we add layers on top of the grief, you know, you're adding a layer of shame on top of your grief when it's totally normal for you to be feeling this way. And to one thing that was a um, huge, like what a breakthrough that I had was, you know, with the law of attraction, you know, we mm. all are familiar with it. And we, we've learned that like voicing anything negative can pretend potentially like attract more negative you know so I think we have this fear like we can't say anything negative because we're going to attract more of it but what if we have the set the intention beforehand um when we need to get it out when we need to express express something that we're feeling we have the intention beforehand that I'm expressing this for the sake of releasing for the sake of healing mm -hmm. Instead mm. of the sake of complaining and repeating and staying on this cycle, there's a whole difference. There's a difference. There's like complaining and staying on this cycle, but there's like releasing and um, clearing and letting go as yeah. you are bringing it up. And when you are feeling a specific emotion like grief and whatever you want to say in that moment when you're grieving, that's your truth. Mm. And you should let that be your truth while you're yeah. experiencing the grief, the grief, because as you are gentle with yourself and allow yourself to say all the things that you're thinking, give it a voice. It is one way of clearing it. Cause a lot of times we try to, you know, keep it down, especially, yeah. you know, with our family members, like you have a husband and a son. And I know that you probably try really hard to, you know, put on a brave face and be happy. You know, you're trying to show up for your family and, um, but it's probably the fact that you are trying so hard to get beyond it, that you're not allowing yourself to express it enough. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's very true. And, very and true. know that that is your truth. You, as much as you, you want to shame it, like, no, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I need to be grateful and, you know, all these things, but let it be what it is and really feel that emotion and, and put mm. words to it. Because, you know, even if it's, you know, if you have somebody that you can, you know, trust that will just hear you, that's one way, but you can always do it on paper and yeah. allow it to come out more. Mm. let it come out instead of trying to like okay you're done you're done you need to be stopped you need to stop grieving now yeah yeah it's like that the patterns from my childhood are coming back you know like pretend you're okay on the outside but squash this stuff down on the inside and I've done all this work and therapy and everything to get past that and yet when it comes to this time I'm sort of doing it again which is like an old behavior really isn't it yeah, but now you're you're aware of it. You're seeing mm. that's the coolest part is when we recognize these patterns that we've adapted from childhood, which that's where most of our patterns and programs mm. come from, what we saw growing up, the, what, what our parents taught us, how we learned to cope with uh, trauma and, you know, big trauma, little trauma. There's a lot, all uh, levels of trauma. You know, I think all of us have trauma, even if it wasn't necessarily like abuse per se, but we mm. have trauma from, you know, what somebody said to us at recess in third grade or yeah. what our teacher said to us once or being embarrassed in, in front of friends. Like we all have trauma and that's mm. what has put our programs and beliefs in place. And so as you start to really allow yourself to feel those feelings, put words to it, then those realizations come up and like, you just notice like, oh yeah, this is a pattern that I tend to do. And it comes from my childhood. I'm trying to suppress that, this grief that I'm feeling. I'm trying to suppress any negative emotion because I got to be happy and on the outside. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, like, I think that uh, that's, uh, it's great that you could bring that up because, you know, feeling like you don't have parents now over the holidays and you're feeling like, you said an orphan and yeah, this is your first time, you know, like in your life, not having parents and mm. that's a whole new season of life, a new experience that you've never yeah. experienced before. Yeah. And it's yeah. scary. It's scary when you go into something new and unknown and unfamiliar. Mm. So you got grief and you got fear. It's very mm. unsettling. Mm. And you know, our, our, survival emotions they our brain you know has told us that it's important to you know stay in the cave stay what stay safe you know like we got to stay and do what's familiar anything unfamiliar is scary and threatening so when you recognize that this is just you going into this new season, which I feel like it could be described as the, the dark night of the soul, right? It's like this, all this unknown, all this unfamiliar, like you don't even know, like it, it's like shaking up your entire world to not yeah. have your parents here anymore. And it's like, who am I now? Yeah. <laughs> it's scary. It's, it's like, it's new and you don't know what, yeah. you don't know what it, all is but relax into it settle into it give it a voice give it words let it be expressed and mm. then you'll you'll start to feel that calm and like you are safe you're safe yeah it is scary you know like every, you know we all go through these different transitions in life and it's it's scary for a while we need to give ourselves that time to you know, like get our bearings, right? Yeah. Like, oh no, I have no, the ground has been swept out from underneath me. I don't even have any, nothing to hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great advice. I will do that. I will um, give it some words and do some writing. I love to write. So um, yeah. I'll definitely do that. Yeah. And this is like, it's like your um, perfect time. You know, it's all coming up for you and it's good. It's good. It's, it's not what you want per se, but it really is what you want because mm -hmm. you want to um, heal. 
and grow beyond this. And as you, you know, take this, look at this Christmas season as, okay, I'm going through the grief again, and that's okay. And I'm going to work on healing and not just push it down and set it aside and shame myself for continuing for still feeling this way. And you might be saying it's already been a year. She, you know, Mm -hmm. I should be feeling Mm -hmm. better by now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's great. Thanks. Yes. Thank thank you you so much, Jackie, for, for sharing. We really appreciate that. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Megan, you're up. Oh, here, Megan, I'll unmute you. Hi. There you go. Hi. Hi, How everybody. Um, I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, I know. You told me that. You're like, I'm angry. I need some coaching. So yes, this is a, so we did grief. Now we're going to go into anger. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just want to say thank you, Jackie. And thank you, Crystal. Um, because actually, um, I just had a really bad day and, um, um, I've been, my problem, I don't know, isn't really the holidays. I actually look forward to the holidays and I love the holidays, but I, I lost my father and Jackie, I understand what you're going through. And that was 12 years ago. And the first Christmas without him, um, you know, all those feelings of grief, I, um, I made a new trim addition and that was, I invited all my clients to be around me and I love giving presents and it became really a lot of fun. And I created um, what I wanted, just like what Crystal said. And I wish that for you. So I like that. sending you much love. You created a new can... tradition from your grief. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just honored that. And I, I'm a doer We're we all do things differently. And, um, that was my path and that is my path. And I, I, I hadn't really been thinking about why I'm so angry. (laughs) And so I want to thank you, Crystal, because this, I've been thinking since you messaged me and, um, mine really stems from, um, uh, my trauma stems from this year, June 23rd. Um, I, um, got a herniated disc. And being a doer, I do. <laughs> Something's <laughs> broken, I fix, right? And I think my struggle in life is I do too much and I don't go with the flow. I need to become more water-like. And um, just, you know, my my horse was injured, I was injured, and um, I'm doing all the things um, to help myself and nothing worked. <laughs> Like what, what have you tried? Well, um, just like, first of all, just getting an MRI, you know, to find out what was wrong with me because I ended up in the ER. I was, my left leg was paralyzed and all I did was twist, you know, like what is that is scary, you know? Um, and then not having anyone be there as a support for me, you know, cause like with my horses, there's so much support. And, um, so then, well, just trying to get my doctor to get an MRI was insane. I had to use my chiropractor and then getting the report um, on what was wrong with me and then getting an answer on how to take care of myself because PT for six weeks wasn't good enough. (laughs) It was like, you're out of your mind. Like there, there has to be better solutions. I was, I already had PT. I had a laser. I injected my back. Um, obviously time is a part of that. I know with horses, I educated myself and I'm still sore. Like the other day I woke up and I'm, you know, I think through this whole process, cause it's four and a half months, I was sad three out of those four and a half months because I was, I have that mentality. I can compartmentalize and say, I can focus on this and do this. And, um, um, I just have to wait or this is the new me <laughs> and I, and I feel stuck and it, it's it, on one hand, it's scary, but I don't usually feel those feelings. I more or less feel um, lately with the colder weather, I have actually been feeling slightly depressed. <laughs> 
I like, I get up in the morning and I don't want to get up because I'm like, oh God, now what's going to happen? And, and I feel like right now, like, and I have such a, I believe in what, what we think comes to us. Right. And so I don't, I acknowledge my injury, but then I do the things to try to get over it, but then I don't fixate on it, but it's not, I'm still hurt. I'm still stuck. I'm stuck. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's what I feel. And then like, I rode my horse today. um, And, you know, I, I have a team that helps me and the, the person that was supposed to be helping me actually hurt my horse. And now I have a better black, you know, I had to fire someone, which was not fun. um, And then hire someone else and to see my, like, I can't do anything for my horse, you know, again, the same theme, like, I can't do anything, I have to be, (laughs) I have Mm -hmm. to live through the moment, whereas, like, for me, I've always been able, I work hard, I can accomplish this, if I, you know, work out, I change my eating habits, I will change. And there's nothing I can do to change these things. And I am looking forward. I get to go to California and train with my coach, but I'm so frustrated because last year we were really like, like I said, when I left my coach last year, um, we were on fire. I was ready to go and do Grand Prix. And then now we can't. And, and the other pressure is, is like, we only have one life. We only have, you know, my horse only has one life. I get this opportunity. I acknowledge the opportunity and he's going to be too old (laughs) and we've wasted it on his feet (laughs) that someone else ruined, you know, and it's like, "Ah," you know, Mm -hmm. and so today that's first world problem. I'm working, negotiating a deal on selling a horse and these people are like offering less, you know? And so I just, I couldn't handle it anymore. And I'm like, Megan, this is not you. This is not even a big problem. Like, why are you so angry? And I think it really, now that I've thought about it, I think it really comes back to my, my health, my horse's health, and there's nothing I can do to change it (laughs) other Mm -hmm. than time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's where I'm at. (laughs) Yes. Well, get it all out. Yes. Ah! Get it out. <laughs> yes. Doesn't it feel good in some way? Like it, you want to pile it on. It's like, yes, this, and then there's this, and then there's this. <laughs> yes. And that's okay. You know, really, I think that um that's it's the same thing that we talked about with Jackie. Like, I do see some shame that you are piling on top of your anger. Mm. Like, oh, okay. Oh, I need to be more positive. Oh, I just, I'm, and, and shame about the fact that you um, can't, you know, frustration that you can't do the things that you usually do and almost shaming you for it. Like it's, mm, it's okay. your fault in a way. Like I am so mad that I can't de- do these things, but I, I think it'd be fun to go a little deeper and, you know, dig into the, the, programs that you have where did it stem from that being so such a doer being so um task oriented and also like you said how you're really good at compartmentalizing which i i do see a benefit you know when you to be able to compartmentalize but sometimes we do it for too long and we put this over here and then we never look at it again Cause we're like, mm-hmm. no, I'm too busy. I got, I got things to do. Let's not look at that. <laughs> you know? So mm-hmm. I, I can see how compartmentalizing can be good temporarily, but we have to remember to go back and look at that and, and, and find out why am I so angry? First of all, that I can't do as much as I want to do. What is this? Where does this come from? What is the part of me that is so fixated on doing? And is there a part of me that thinks that my value comes from doing, or is it what really gives you joy to do a lot of things? Like, what is it, what is behind the motivation to be such a doer? You know, I think initially, like when I was a young professional and an athlete, um, doing gave me validation. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would agree Um, And then I think now there was a change, like after, you know, 
you got the awards, you proved to yourself that you are worthy. I do feel that I am worthy. Um, I think I'm angry right now because like, um, it takes so long to train a horse to this level. And I recognize the fact that I have like two years and we both have an injury on this, you know, like we have this year and then maybe we have next year up top, top level. And I think that's what's making me like to take away that joy of um, working. Like I, I just look forward to working with my horse every day and then to see us both <laughs> in pain and struggling. Mm -hmm. Um and, and I have to say, I think like last year too, it stems from, I also am a little bit feeling lost in why do I do what I do as a, as a horse trainer, um, as someone who teaches people, right? So you, it's like living art, right? I train this horse, but, um, and it goes on to someone that they buy it and then they do whatever they're going to do to it, whether it they, they actually learn the things that I've trained it or they destroy the animal. Um, I think something happened, something happened last year to a horse I was very close with. And, um, you know, you just want to hold on to those moments, right, that you've created with such a beautiful being. And um, I might get emotional, you know, like the time is short. And so then also thinking about, well, what is my purpose and thinking about how I serve people. And um, cause I always admire in being a part of this group. I always thought I had gratitude and purpose and serving others. And I kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it goes to those those two things like I do feel I have value I didn't realize I think I, I thought I was over the shaming business but um but I think it's more the sense of like we just get this moment and it's going to be over right mm -hmm. like I've gone through that process of like where you take a person or a horse for granted and now you have have that moment and I love it because I'm like I don't take each day for granted, but it's, it's going to be over soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I and love so that you're like, oh. allowing yourself to feel these things. I think it's so good for you. Let the tears come, let it all like express it. You know, it feels really good to get this out, you know, and to say these things. And oh, I don't yeah. think we give ourselves enough opportunities to say the yeah. really really express like in our heart like why is it so painful yeah you know, we just want to put it aside like I shouldn't be feeling this I shouldn't ugh, you know <laughs> I need to be more grateful I need to focus on being in the present moment like we have all these advice you know all this advice that we hear over and over from all the different gurus and we're like okay just stay present be positive but also we need to allow ourselves to express deep what's deep down in our soul and why it's so sad why it's so frustrating and why it hurts so much you know yeah because it's it's a gift that we get <laughs> yeah yeah like we have these you emotions know? for a reason you know yeah, we're always I... trying to be done with it like no that's negative let's not do that but <laughs> we need to allow ourselves to express it and get it out and know for that sure. and let it be our truth I think that's the biggest um, thing that I, my biggest breakthrough was like, oh, this is my truth. Even though in a week I might not be feeling this anymore, but this is my truth. And I should, I should let it be what it is and not shame myself for feeling this way. And then like express it and get it out. But then, so now we, we hold space for all of that. Mm -hmm. And, and this is not necessarily compartmentalizing because you just really like felt it, you know? So that's like progress. So put it over here for just a second. It's still there. We're not smashing <laughs> it down with any positive thoughts, but let's just balance it out with a, a different way of describing it. You know, like how is this 
how, what are you gaining from this? How is this possibly a good thing? And then you can just explore, like, what are the good takeaways that I can have from this? What are, what is this revealing about myself that maybe it was good for me at that season of my life, but it sounds to me like you're almost experiencing something similar to Jackie, like dark night of the soul, whole new paradigm shift. Who am I now? Like, this is different. This is all new. And I've never been in this position before where I feel like I'm, you know, not physically where I'm used to being. And now I, am I going to just have to accept it or, you know, like what, what's my future. And so this, there's these unknowns that you want to hope that you can heal and get better, but at the same time, you're resisting worst case scenario, which I think one good exercise to do is to, to imagine the worst case scenario, just for the sake of settling into it. Like, can I be okay with that? Can I be okay Mm -hmm. with that? And not saying that, okay. And like succumbing to like, I'll never be able to heal, but what is the worst case scenario and why are you so afraid of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, if I couldn't ride again, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Which eventually in life, it is going to happen, but I didn't think 42, I would have thought maybe like 80. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Right? Like, what Mm -hmm. the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, guys. (laughs) No. (laughs) We're all about expressing. Just say the words you want to say. Let it out. (laughs) Yeah, I don't have a problem with that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so I think that, you know, yeah like what the fuck like really like right now like this is what I expected at like 80 not now (laughs) yeah yeah we always wish that well we hope that our lives will go as planned we're like okay I'm gonna die at 99 years old I'm gonna (laughs) you know die before I'm gonna die in my bed with my husband and like that's how I want (laughs) like I have all this these plans of how I'm gonna die and how you know everything that's gonna happen in my life but it's hard for us to be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm hard with for, you. Yeah. It really is hard to be open to all these changes that are, are going to come our way unexpectedly. It's going to be a whole new territory, but we just got to relax, relax, yeah, let it go. <laughs> yeah. Get it out and relax into the potential possibility of I might not be able to write. And I don't want to say that, you know, as like, you know, you should get used to it, but just, just think about it for a minute. Like, what if this was your new reality? Like, what are some, what are some new ways you could look at it that might seem a little less painful, just a little less painful. It doesn't have to be like roses and rainbows and sunshine. It's just like, what's, what's a slightly less painful way of describing your current reality I have no idea I think I would sell the farm (laughs) do something my entire life has been surrounded by horses (laughs) so so let's say you can't ride anymore does that really mean that you you have to give up your horses um no of course not but like I think when you're so in it um I don't know. And the the joy that you get, like, cause the whole reason I did it and, and do what I do is because of that bond I have with horses, right? I created my business. So that way I could fund my dream of competing internationally. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and um, yeah. So like you spend your entire life doing that. I would, I would probably let go and do other things. <laughs> Yeah. Like what? What would you do? I have no idea. Take a vacation. Yeah. 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 When's the last time you had a vacation? Well, actually, I did take one. My fiance made me go out one last uh, last month, but it was hell. Oh. <laughs> we, were, we went to Costa Rica and um, my job was to do nothing. And his job was to go surfing because he moved from California to Wisconsin and he hasn't been able to surf. He got hurt the first day and the rest of the, the time I was taking care of him. And then I got food poisoning. <laughs> I was like, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. You could make a movie out of it. It could be an entertaining film, right? Sometimes we, yeah. it's like uh, when something so crazy and outrageous happens and it all seems to happen at once. Sometimes it is kind of fun to, I like that you're laughing about it. You know, like, <laughs> is this possible? Is this really possible? It's all happening to me in 2021. Like, what the hell? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> so we can laugh about it and just yeah. be like, wow, that is pretty crazy. <laughs> just yeah, lighten that, it so up just a little bit, huh? That, that's why I said it just like I came home and it was just one thing after the next and you're like sitting here like how do I stop it and again maybe to your point it goes to you just sit in the moment and figure out how to let go <laughs> I know like figure it out right it's like we know that we need to let go of this resistance like we all this resistance comes up in life you know resistance to change is a big thing for all of us we don't want change we do, but we don't, right? Change is I don't scary. Change. Yeah, like we <laughs> we like to grow and we like to evolve. You know, we 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 enjoy that process of growth in life. But when it all comes down to it, we really don't want to change. At the same time, it's like we're battling like <laughs> with what we want, but then we don't want it at the same time. But it's we always when we look back at all of the past experiences at the times where it was extremely challenging and you, you were in this moment of, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, Oh, this is like the worst thing that could possibly happen. And then a few years down the road, you're like, wow, like I really just didn't know I, I could get beyond that. Or I just didn't think that I would ever be happy again. Or, you know, just all these different fears that we have when things start to change, it scares us. We think that it's like a, a legit threat to our survival. <laughs> it's the way our brains mm -hmm. are wired. And, but really we, we thrive on change, you know, and these types of things that happen to us that shakes up our whole reality really is like the best opportunity. And I'm not trying to force that on you quicker than you're ready. Cause you know, you have to be, let this anger be there. Don't be so quick to change it and be like, okay, now I got to like figure out how to like accept this new reality, you know, <laughs> like kicking our feet and just like throwing a tantrum at the same time. Like, no, I, I just don't really want to accept this new reality. But so it's like a matter of just giving yourself that time to go from anger to grief, you know, like allow yourself to grieve a little bit of what you thought was going to be the next, you know, the reality of your next two years, you know, with your, your horse and what you're grieving the loss of what you thought was going to be, but it was never going to be mm -hmm. because, you know, it is what it is. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's like, we, we have to grieve the loss of what we thought was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But also, you know, it's like, not so doom and gloom, like, lose hope on healing because there's still that potential so it's like stay oh, yeah. open to the fact that you might miraculously heal and get back to what you were doing but also play around with worst case scenario can I be okay with it can I settle into it can I grieve that can I stop shaming myself for being angry and and uh or upset about all of these things and just ah <sighs> breathe into it sure can yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's great though I love that we could talk about anger and grief and I feel like um I'm sure a lot of people can relate to to what they're experiencing right now you know when it, it it's all different experiences but similar emotions I'm sure anger and grief anger around um the things, the obligations that we feel that we have to do this time of year, anger around the fact that we have to be around certain people that we wouldn't choose to be around, but we're forced to be around them for the holidays or anger about um, childhood trauma. You know, it comes up this time of year and perhaps we're feeling a lot of anger right now towards family members because of our childhood, what happened in our childhood. Um, we all have trauma and it's, it's okay. And we can get past it, 
but let it be, let yourself, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and express it on paper or to, to another person and don't shame yourself for feeling what you're feeling. Cause as you allow yourself to feel it, that's when it begins to dissolve and heal. And we're, we're, uh, we're resisting the healing process and we're like putting it off every time we suppress these emotions and tell ourselves like, you need to be beyond this. You shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be sad anymore. You need to let things go. Like stop telling yourself those things because it will happen naturally as you allow yourself to speak your truth and to feel your, feel your feelings. Thank you guys so much. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed Jackie and Megan. I loved that you guys were willing to open up and talk about some of the things that you're experiencing. I think it can be really helpful. And I appreciate you guys joining me live. I love seeing you guys live. And um, I will be doing another mindset call January. The um, I don't know the date exactly, but the first Thursday in January, I'll be here again with a whole new topic, but I'm, I'm excited about talking about January because um, we're going to talk about, you know, setting our intentions for 2023 goals, all that fun stuff, manifesting. So you guys, I hope you can enjoy the holidays as best as you can, but don't, don't try to put on a happy face for the sake of doing what you are, are expected to do, but take this time for healing and, and allow it to be what it is and know that as you allow yourself to feel it, it, it will start to feel lighter and lighter. <laughs>